Well, welcome to uh, a April lunch lecture that uh, we're uh, going to enjoy today. So uh, I think most of you saw my email that in May, I'm excited about hosting uh, uh, someone from the Kidner Institute that I've related to, Justin Dyer. And uh, many of you have heard me talk through the years about volunteerism and essentialism and um, the issues of fideism and how natural theology plays into our understanding. Uh, and so I reread recently a paper by Justin Dyer uh, through political science, even though he is a Mizzou uh, faculty member. And uh, but anyway, it's on on the issue of C.S. Lewis and a running debate that he had with Karl Barth about uh, this issue of how much should natural theology, our interactions with science, social um, research, etc., play into our understanding of scripture. Of course, C.S. Lewis looked for a much more integrated approach, but Bart separated himself from it uh, because of his reactions to liberalism, etc. Anyway, it's a fascinating conversation. We're going to do that in May. And I sent a link there as well if you want to read ahead and we're actually interested in the journal article, check that out in May. I have had a uh, interview conversation with uh, Bill Webb, those of you know, who know of him through the redemptive move hermeneutic and the book Slaves, Women, and Homosexuals. Uh, he has a new book called Bloody, Brutal, and Barbaric when he was here with us a decade or more ago, uh, talked with us about some of the violence uh, in the Old Testament and those war texts. And I've asked him if he would come and uh, be our uh, guest here in a future lunch lecture. So we're going to figure out if we want to do that um, as well. I've also been in contact with uh, Kirk McGregor that many of you know that has been with us now three times and uh, have talked with Kirk about what conversation we might with ha him, have with him in our winter lecture series. And so I'm pretty committed to just making him a regular part of our schedule. And uh, Kirk has suggested that we might want to talk about the issue of church history. So he's asking me what topics about church history or what part of church history, either the early church or the medieval period or the Reformation, or if you will, more modern slash American evangelical uh, Protestantism history. So if you have thoughts on that, feel free to text me um, or email me if you have a particular interest in church history. So that's probably what we'll do uh, with, um, the week, the second full week of January is when we're planning for those winter lecture series. Uh, so anyway, those are some of the things on the horizon coming up and Trimper Longman, of course, next April as well that uh, we're looking forward to and uh, Hugh Ross as well on July 17th, a Saturday morning with Dr. Hugh Ross, if Yay! you know of his work, and Jim <laughs> certainly does, and John Gilman, who's here in the quote-unquote TEI studio, as we'll call it today. So those are a few things that I'm looking forward to. Uh, today, I asked uh, a local pastor, Jim Boyd, to join me because he has gotten training recently in a new staff development or personal uh, self-awareness leadership tool called Grit Berkman. And uh, I think it's unfamiliar to most of us in what it might mean. Every four or five years, Hang on just a second. Uh, what it might mean in order for us to um, yeah, to continue to improve. So through the years we've worked with Enneagram, uh, we found value from the DISC uh, that you may be familiar with. Myers-Briggs is another one. And all of these are types that help us to work better as a team or to better understand ourselves and uh, appreciate all, all of them. But this was one that had a different flavor and a different flair. And uh, there are personal assessments as you'll hear about as well as a team assessment. So I sat with Jim recently, he described it to me, and I wanted him to make that available to you uh, because all of us care about our own personal awareness as well as a better understanding of who, 
who our team members are and how to appreciate their unique contributions. So if you would, um, let me switch the video here and uh, give a warm welcome through your applause signals or your hand motions to Pastor Jim Boyd. Yeah, so a couple of things about Jim. One is uh, that Jim pastors the Hallsville United Methodist Church. Uh, he is an Asbury Theological Seminary graduate and uh, a part of the United Methodist denomination. And uh, increasingly, Jim has, although he's been a friend of TEI and of mine for a number of years, increasingly he has had this growing interest in the health of local churches, uh, serving as a consultant to uh, ministry leaders and to the teams and ensuring that we sort of do our best uh, to be um, good, vibrant, healthy organizations. So Jim, tell us a little bit about GRIP. Berkman, if you would, how did you uh, become acquainted with it? And, and then a little bit about the kind of training and certification that you did on top of the Enneagram uh, training that you, you added. So let's start there with, with sort of, yeah, your training and then how it interacts or why you wanted to add it to your Enneagram uh, piece of that, what it adds, what's different about it. Yeah, I actually learned about it uh, at, my, at my Enneagram event. I was training in, of all places, uh, Viva Las Vegas, and I was doing the training there, and there was a gentleman much like yourself who was... Uh, good looking. Good looking, debonair, smart. smart. Go ahead. He was at a yeah. at church. Well, he was, it. yeah, he was a leader. Uh, I'm trying to think of the Church of Christ University in Texas, Abilene. Arden Simmons? No. Okay. Abilene Christian University. Okay, gotcha. um, he was at Abilene Christian University and he taught classes there and he does leadership development for a lot of the pastors and is in charge of a lot of those things. And so um, him and I struck off a good relationship and had some meals together. Um, and he was the one that initially told me about this, this thing that they utilize kind of in their tribe, very often called the Grip Berkman. Um, and so it was when I got back home from that training that he kind of sent it to me. Um, and then I took it and he sat down, uh, and that was my first taste. I was like, oh, this is very, this is very different. Like I've just been learning about this Enneagram thing that is so helpful, but this Grip Berkman thing almost goes at it from a little bit, uh, different, different way, but then provides kind of greater detail to us about what we can do as a result of, of what we've learned about ourselves. Okay. What fundamentally is the, uh, as we get started, then I'll let you launch into a sort of a presentation and overview about it. And then we'll come back for some final questions and uh, anything that uh, uh, at about 10 till, five till, something like that, we'll spend the last 20, 25 minutes in conversation with those who are online and in the room. Um, for you, what was the biggest reveal outside of the other assessments that you've done? So kind of summarize, if you would, uh, this, this assessment added a piece that I didn't previously had. Yeah. You know, I think the, the real focus is around uh, our needs uh, in, in kind of different environments, also within our work, also within our relationships. Uh, and how we're going about getting those, those needs fulfilled in those different roles, but also like socially, here's what, and the Enneagram teaches this and, and so does this, like we are all perceiving one another differently. Um, it's not really uncommon for you to have somebody maybe that you work with and, and you have this relationship with this individual and you talk to somebody else about that individual and you think, are we talking about the same person? Like my interaction is, is so much different. Um, and so it really stands to give us greater social awareness of one another, of our own disabilities. Um, but then also the thing that the Grip Berkman focuses on that I think the Enneagram kind of misses intentionally um, is keeping it all very positive. Um, that we are all actually very different. That, that doesn't have to be negative. So often we make it that. Um, we, we kind of type certain people 
in negative ways because maybe they're more aggressive than we are or more assertive than we are, mm -hmm. or they go about things differently than us. And so the Grip Berkman coaching really prides itself on see all aspects of human nature as positive. Um, and if you're, if you're a good, if you're a good leader, a uh, pastor leader, whatever, and you're leading a group of people, then be careful not to look at how someone is maybe kind of different from everyone else and say, oh, that's of no use to us. Like uh, instead to recognize that uh, that's a, there's a positive trait there that you can yeah. coach for great purpose within your church organization. So there's a synergism and a team dynamic and a body of Christ certainly a theological uh, perspective that the training held for you. Yes. And I also heard you describing that it was very much about application and how this makes us more effective in fulfilling our mission. That yes. the ways we're talking about it is not just simply navel gazing, but it's about mission fulfillment yeah. and that we need one another and be aware of our deficiencies and how to be gentle with each other, et cetera. So yeah. a spiritual slash theological foundation um, very much as so. well that was there very um, much spiritual so. giftings etc yeah okay and, and greater unity around yeah. the mission vision and all right well share with us uh talk for a while about uh, what it looks like uh what materials that that yeah just orient us to the group and then i'll feel free to jump in and then uh then we'll we'll move it to questions about okay. things that were so i will orient um so the, the grip berkman is actually uh you know it's two different profiles, the grip and the Berkman that have been brought together. And so uh, there's the grip, and then there's the grip and the basic Berkman, uh, which is missing some of the components that the full assessment has. I learned that when I was in my first workshop, when some of the very things that I was really excited about in my uh, signature report uh, weren't included in my training and i'm like and they're like oh well that's the advanced training <laughs> i was like oh okay. so uh i i completed that advanced training and uh so the grip and the signature berkman uh is is the full assessment with all the components and so there's three different ways that that we do kind of training with folks that were that were taught to do um when doing the grip berkman and the first one is is coaching to learn how to sit down with somebody in their assessment um, and then to kind of coach them on how to be uh, better leaders, more aware leaders of their gifts and abilities, and their natural leanings. And then the third way is what we call a team build. And so we're trained to sit down with, with entire teams, whether that be a church organization or business, and help them kind of come together and, and recognize their similarities, recognize their differences, value those differences, communicate better about those differences uh, to be a better team. So the, the different ways that I would, I would work with uh, folks as a, as a Grip Berkman coach is, is first of all, on an individual basis, uh, I can sit down with, with somebody and, and their, their profile and we can kind of talk about that and ways to kind of improve and, and to grow and to make steps in the right direction. Secondly, uh, it's great for staff. And so if you have a, a church staff, organizational staff, to be able to sit down with that whole staff and to help people talk about the things that they learned and uh, the people that they need on the team that perhaps they didn't, they didn't recognize before. Uh, the third is like board or ministry teams. And so say your church organization, you've got a, a board and you would like to do some, some coaching with that board on how to recognize the gifts and the abilities, the strengths and the weaknesses that are around that table and, and how to work together better, but also a ministry team. Let's say you had a large youth ministry or, or kids ministry and wanted to do a training for one of those teams. Um, also, I think the Grip Berkman lends itself to kind of conflict management. Uh, oftentimes the, the conflicts that we have are once again around our inability to recognize who's really in front of us what their what their needs really are, their expectations really are, um, and so, so it creates, I hear you saying it creates a kind of vocabulary in order to navigate the conflict that you're having. Yes, yeah, very. So you're probably seeing things this way, and I. It helps me to be able to ask the right questions, etc. Yes, to kind of frame that better. Yeah, 
Uh, and then also I would say a uh, new leader training. Uh, and so let's say that core of your team is already familiar with, with the Grit Berkman, um, but then you bring somebody new on the staff. Uh, generally what they have, they have taught us is that the Grit Berkman, Berkman assessment, when you do this with a team, so let's say you're new to a staff, right? You kind of, you kind of on location, it, it can take years yeah. to really kind of understand what everybody's saying around the table and what's going on there. And so what they say is, is that with kind of a month or two of, of Rip Berkman training and, and a whole team kind of understanding the results that you're getting a year and a half of advanced work. Turbo. Turbo. Yeah. Yeah. Understanding who's around the table, what their needs are, what they're really saying when they're saying things. Um, and the other thing that I think would be great at, which is why I'm, I'm glad John, John, Pastor John Gilman's in the room, uh, is uh, internships. And so if you're at a particular church where you've got an internship and you're training up young leaders, this assessment is a gift. It is a gift to young people to be able to recognize very early on kind of their leanings in their leadership style and their communication, um, but, but also to understand the counterbalance because for any strong giftedness, there is always a counterbalance. Um, and sometimes we call that your shadow. Like there's this, this thing that you're missing. And so this kind of lends to that. And so if you're at a church with internships, be a great, a great gift. Tell us a little bit about um, who founded it, why they founded it, and then also if, uh, if you would, what is grit? <laughs> yes. Yeah, sure. More than happy to. Uh, so as I said, the, the grip is grip Berkman's two separate assessments. The Berkman, right? The Berkman was the first assessment. Um, and it was created by a gentleman named Dr. Roger Berkman. Roger Berkman. Roger Berkman was a World War II pilot. And as he was piloting with other pilots, he realized that, that people's stress responses were all different and that put them almost into a, a different level of behavior. And for some that aided them in the process of being a pilot, and for some, it challenged, it, it hurt their, their piloting skills. And so he had this keen interest in the fact that people have a usual behavior, but people also have a stress behavior. And so how are those things different? What is it that triggers those things and having a greater awareness around that? And so he left World War II and he, uh, he becomes a PhD in psychology, uh, gets that degree, University of Texas, Austin. He then develops the Berkman Method, named after himself, <laughs> you know, uh, the Berkman Method. And the Berkman Method is meant to assess personality and social perception. Uh, your own personality, your understanding of that, your social perception of other people, those relationships. And when you do this, when you help assess both your, your own understanding of yourself and then your understanding of, of other folks in your social settings, this leads to coachable growth. You now have coachable growth moments because you have measurable tools to show people, it makes some conversations so much easier um, that's sometimes hard when you're just sitting down with somebody. And so Mr. Berkman begins to initially only use this in business and education. Being a businessman himself, he uses it in business education. However, Mr. Berkman is also a great man of faith, loves God, loves his local church, um, has, has a heart for the Christian faith. And so while he's doing this Berkman method, he develops a relationship with uh, a missionary. And this missionary's name is Dr. Paul Ford. And Dr. Paul Ford becomes a consultant for uh, the Berkman. And that's how uh, Mr. Berkman begins to branch this thing out is with consultants. And so him and Dr. Paul Ford become good friends and, and foster this relationship. And, but, but Paul Ford recognizes that for the church, there could be a, a whole nother layer onto this that would be helpful, right? And so what he basically did was Paul Ford created in the grip, a spiritual gifts assessment but based upon your spiritual gifts, you actually posture yourself in certain ways on teams and how you interact with people and what actually what your goals are when you're part of that team, right? 
And I think you told me that grip is leadership grip. Is that right? Yeah, your leadership grip. Okay. Your leadership grip. Um, and, and also this leadership grip is, it's uh, shorter, it's more affordable, and it's easier for, for church teams to kind of get a hold of and to go with. Uh, and so he creates what's called the leadership grip, right? And so in 2003, uh, Roger and Paul develop what is known as the Grip Berkman Blueprint Tool, your Grip Berkman Blueprint Tool for leadership and team development is, is how those two tools came together. Um, and how about... Yeah, I don't want to cut you off, but how about if you go to one of the tools now and just give us a, a an overview of like something that was, yeah, whatever you can way. Gotcha. Or minimizing. Uh, so what are the components that delineate the two? Is that what you're um, asking? No. One of what is what is a tool within one of them? What would it look like? What what do you consider? Um, like show us the boxes sure. or something like that and explain one of those. Sure. So uh, just real quickly, and I, I, I'll come back to this, but um, so this is, and you've seen these boxes before. This is, this is the Berkman box uh, and it has these different components that I'll talk about here in a minute, but it basically frames kind of personality uh, upon a couple different ways. First of all, if you're more extroverted in, in how you show up with other people, uh, then you tend to gravitate towards the top of this box. If you're more introverted in the way that you tend to show up around other people and, uh, and kind of get your energy, then you show up towards the bottom of the box. If in um, your work, kind of what you are naturally drawn to, you're more people oriented. Okay. And, and tend to think about things more in the framework of how to help or improve others, then you tend to go to this side of the box. If you tend to approach life more as kind of tasks, like getting certain things done, you have kind of goals that don't revolve around people, but objectives, then you tend to lean more over to this task side of the box. And, and that's how the, the grid is set up at the beginning of it. Gotcha. And that's specific to the grip or the Berkman? The Berkman. That's the Berkman piece. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Is that picture yours? No, this is actually uh, a generic okay. they give us. But I'll talk about mine here. Okay, back to you. Okay. So, yeah, sure. get a little feel for Yeah, a little taste for yeah. what's going on here. Very good. Uh, so the grip Berkman has a tagline, and they, they talk about this tagline often. And the tagline for the Grip Berkman is from I to we, from I to we. And so they really emphasize, um, and this is probably a difference when we talk about the Enneagram, like the Enneagram is generally more kind of individual focused. Right. The Grip Berkman, the heart of it is really to help individuals understand how they fit on team. It's to help the church understand that there's no one individual within the church that should rise up, that should be greater than the sum, um, but that it's the parts, all of us working in unity together that bring about the greatest glory to God and unification of, of the church. Um, and so that's, that's their whole focus. And they really drive, they really drive this in. Um, and especially with the grip, when I meet with people about their grip, uh, which is kind of the easier, uh, kind of shorter one to go through about spiritual gifts and team styles. What I talk about with folks is first of all, where are you strong? Where has God made you strong in your giftedness and, and your leaning? But then once again, as a result of that, where are you weak? Which may not be a conversation that people enjoy having, but it's the truth as leaders. We have a strength, we have a weakness. And so where are you weak? And then as a result of where are you weak, where do you need help? Um, and so that's a lot of the conversation that the Grip Berkman trains us to have. And once again, to have these conversations in order to develop greater unity and alignment in, in the body of Christ and with the mission and vision of, of your local church, but also the bigger church. And, and this should be turning your mind towards a passage. You need to let Beatrice in. <laughs> um, towards 1 Corinthians 12, right? This is 1 Corinthians 12 stuff. Um, and the phrase that 
the I really so Grip Berkman, the Christian arm of this is really a Christian community of people. And I figured that out really quickly. There's amongst these leaders, there is a, a Christian camaraderie that I was attracted to. Um, that was pretty impressive. And, and part of the conversation that they keep having, which in my tribe, I don't know that I hear this phrase too much. So the phrase caught my attention a lot. And a phrase that they keep using in, in this particular spiritual tribe of people is body life. They talk about body life a lot and the importance of body life. Um, and that each Christian church is a, a, a body and should have um, this health and vitality to it that you only get when you operate fully in your giftedness and when you honor others' giftedness. Yeah. The reason these uh, assessments make sense to me, regardless of the team building tool, this sounds like a good one, but they're so critical is because every time you introduce a new team member, or you're forming a new team, or the elder board is getting formed, yes. or you put together a uh, missions team or whatever, every time you introduce a new variable, they don't know the stories. And so over time, it's the people who do know each other assume each other's stories. They have an intuitiveness about it. And yet the new dynamic of the new team member doesn't yeah. know those stories. And we don't take the time to share our stories. We just sort of, what's the decision that needs to get made and then the conflict arises. So yeah. this, this regular sort of pause, team dynamic, tools, retreats, assessments, vocabulary, in order to appreciate each other's differences, stresses, needs, yeah, yeah whatever the language is. So, And it allows you to kind of see yourself and perhaps a light you you haven't before. And and once again, our our brains, our whole, the whole um, premise of ego, is that our ego's desire to protect us and to protect us from the things about ourselves that we don't we don't want to know because yeah. that sometimes that's what our confidence is based upon is is what we don't know. And so right. the the challenge the is blind the blind spot. And so this kind of brings to light a fullness of your kind of ego nature. And if you're in a team setting, it does it with the team. And so it gives you an opportunity to go, oh, and I'll, and I'll talk about for me, some of those things that I saw in mine in just a minute. But yeah, And I think it also increases then as we do our own assessment, then increases our understanding. Oh, not everybody thinks the way I think. Yeah. Yes. And that's also built into the assessment to show you, in fact, areas in your own leadership where you tend to lean so heavily in a certain direction that you, you, you are not able to relate to the other side. Yeah. Gotcha. So, um, so yeah, that's a little bit about kind of its background and about the spiritual focus, um, how, how it's different from maybe uh, DISC or, uh, you know, Myers-Briggs or StrengthsFinder or any of those. Um, the assessment is really meant to be paired with coaching and training. Uh, coaching and training is kind of how to get the, the fullness out of it. Um, the, the grip, once again, spiritual gifts, your posture in teams based upon your gifts combination, where you're strong, where, where you are weak, who do you need? Uh, and then the, the Berkman is kind of this, uh, once again, deep is like we were just talking about, deepens your emotional intelligence, gives you a, a fuller understanding of yourself also deepens your social intelligence, deepens your understanding of who the other, the other players are on the team and, and where they're coming at and hopefully a more positive light because sometimes when we lean in a certain direction, it just seems negative. Perhaps it's not as negative as you've been thinking. Perhaps they have some gifts and abilities because of this thing that kind of turns you off. Oftentimes, the people that drive us most Penny. crazy on a team are the people that we need Penny. to know. And it's, and it's kind of hard to admit that. But they may very well have a giftedness that you need that, you know, and it's why we, you know, for those of us that are married, it's, it's why you don't marry somebody just like you, right? And so it's those things that are attracted to us that later create wedges in our marriages. Because it's like, oh, this was kind of cool and neat, but now it's, it's getting kind of hard because these differences 
you know, staff, boards, churches, I think the same thing kind of happens there. Um, and so once again, the, the Burton gives you an awareness of your, of your needs, your regular behavior, your stress behavior. It's going to show you this with other people on your team. I don't know that a lot of other profile tools do that, give you that full spectrum. Um, it, it's going to provide you, is very important to Grit Burton. It's going to provide you this feedback in a positive manner. I mean, they, they overemphasize that, that, and they tell us as coaches, be careful of your own weaknesses. Be careful that you don't paint people into like these boxes that we, we do around these assessments, but do your best to see everything in personality as something that can, that can be positive and coachable. So yeah. that's good. Gotcha. Um, it's going to give you coachable tips and recommendations to do your best work with your team. Um, which some assessments don't have, but so the coach is able to do that with you. But even if nobody did any coaching with you, it's still kind of all in there. And, and once again, it centers this team dynamic on openness and vulnerability with the team, right? If, if you have conflict on your staff or in your organization, if, if, if there is a dynamic that is not going well, you can generally pinpoint one thing and the one thing is distrust right. that distrust has entered into the team and into the organization and so usually the only way on your teams to kind of recalibrate once distrust is hit is either a staff member leaves or two or a board member leaves or, or whatever yeah. um, and then you kind of heal and recorrect or there's a point of vulnerability where there is an openness about what's really going on um, and vulnerability creates trust on our teams. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the grip, the Berkman is going to naturally create that opportunity for you and for your team to have this vulnerability. And I have to tell you that for my, I'm, I'm not at a big church. And so I've got my administrator in there and we're actually going to go over his, his results today. Um, but when I sat down with my administrator and I showed him my Rip Bertman results, um, it, it, was, it was a vulnerable for me to do that because it pointed out some of the reasons him and I have had some challenges. And when I got done, he looked at me and he said, thank you for sharing that. Like he knew that that was, I, you know, there it all is, here's, here's, why we've had some struggles. Well, in fact, uh, you told me privately, which I'll share publicly. Yeah, sure. Is that you said that uh, the sense was you're a consummate planner and that yes. this plan just keeps coming back around yes. every time. And it was a way of saying, hey, let's 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 do some implementation. We got the plan, but you yeah. like to analyze, et cetera. Can you show us yes. like results or your results? Or yeah, well, this is actually, uh, they give us kind of this generic deal. And so I'll just walk you through this uh, fairly quickly. Uh, so you can see, and so you want to flip this over here. This is the, the Berkman signature report. Once again, this is kind of the full report that I'm, I'm able to do with folks. Um, and this one is a, a generic one. And, and so first of all, once again, this is broken up. Uh, it's, it's going to put your behavior into kind of four different categories here. There are those of us that tend to lean towards quick action. And, and doing things rather quickly. There are those of us that tend to be uh, communication oriented. And as we think about what we're doing next, we're thinking about communication and, and kind of persuasion with that, right? Uh, you got your analyzers. And so you got people that are great with numbers and, and systems and like to try to improve things in that way and get the data and the information. And then you've got these people that are thinkers, right? They really think about planning and putting things in place and, and um, having everything set up. And so the coloration, notice the coloration, red, green, yellow, and blue uh, is how that's kind of broken up, right? And so here's an example, and uh, there are four personality components. And so the first personality components is what are your interests? Uh, this does not measure proficiency. It's not asking, are you good at these things? It's asking, what are you interested in? Because the truth is the things that we are interested in are the things that we gravitate towards. And so even in your work, 
there are things that you are interested in that you gravitate towards, and there are things that you are not interested in that you desire to stay away from. And of course, this creates problems in our work at times, right? Now, Chip, are those in the, in the test itself, are those open-ended questions that are asking your interest, or are they already predetermined, uh, like towards task or towards people, that kind of thing? So there, I think there, are, it's a lot of questions. It's either 300 or 400 questions. Okay. And, uh, and I think for the interest, they're simply uh, this or that questions. So would, would you rather uh, be outside for the day or would you rather be inside working with your computer? Okay. Um, would you rather be with people today or would you rather be So it's not about them? interest. That I don't, we're getting into weeds, but it's, yeah, it's more generic type tendencies towards interest as opposed to saying I like sports and you like you know, it's more interestingly enough it's more around occupation okay it's more around your your occupational interests and so there are occupational things that I'm interested in I'm not gifted to do them but you know it, and it's like you're you're bringing in this the science guy yeah um right you Ross you Ross very interested in that I love reading about that now did I get a D in biology and chemistry in college? Yes, both times, okay. you know? All right, go back. All right. Thank you. Uh, so this is your, your interest indicator. Then you have your usual behavior. This is how you show up in the world. This is based upon your gifts and your strengths and your abilities. Um, and then the circle is your, your needs. And this is, once again, the, the highlight of, of the Berkman that is I, really eye-opening for me is, is that you need certain things in an optimal environment. Like you may need for people on your staff to turn things in ahead of time. You don't want it late. You don't want it on time. You may need to, to have a little bit more flexibility in your workplace. You might like the fact that you, if you want to leave for lunch, you can do that. And, and you would struggle if you maybe had a job where they were like, look, you don't leave until we tell you to leave. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so there are different things that we need that if we don't get lead to stress behavior, right? And so when those things aren't fulfilled, we begin to get stressed. And your stress behavior is your last ditch effort to get your needs met because your usual behavior did not create the result that you were hoping for. And so now you're stressed. And so you're showing this, this other side of yourself in order to get, get needs met. And so these components are all on this, this chart here. And so here you can see this individual's usual behavior is that they are very people oriented, love, love to be around people and with people. And they tend to be a little bit more extroverted in, in how they go about. So if you knew this person, um, they're, they're probably fairly outgoing and enjoy being around folks and, and probably quite a few folks. And yet they're close enough to this blue box, right? To be, kind of thoughtful about how they're doing things. Uh, but in their interests, right, in the things they're interested in, that tends to gravitate them more towards this extroverted nature uh, and more towards this task-oriented way of doing things. And so this is where their interests come in hand. Now, their needs takes them fully into a whole nother box, right? And so this individual needs for things to be more detailed even though they're more people oriented, they, they go about uh, being with people in more of a, a task type way. And they possibly like the analytics and kind of need that. If they're, if they're a pastor, like they want to know what was Sunday attendance compared to Sunday attendance last year? What was our financial numbers compared to last year? Um, they, they want some of that information and, and, when they become stressed, begin to behave more like this person. And so when they get stressed, they actually pull away from people and pull away from relationships. And they want to probably be more by themselves and, and tend to want to try to get some things done by themselves. I'll just do it myself, right? So this is kind of their, their stress behavior. So that's how the map would work and coaching with the map. And so what's great is then it begins to break it down. And so it says, hey, here are your interests. And so therefore you're the type of person that probably likes to sell or promote, direct people, motivate people, build agreement and persuade. 
and and so it lists these out for you uh, and then here is your usual behavior and so based upon this diamond in this usual spot it's like you're probably the type of person that's responsive and independent flexible and enthusiastic uh, this is great this was a word in mind that this person tends to be selectively sociable uh, that's a nicer word for sometimes snobby <laughs> Right. Uh, this showed up under this showed up under mine. Like I, I am. I'm just I'm a little more selectively sociable and the type of people that I that I kind of want to hang out with versus somebody who's much more extroverted and just loves all people, loves all that contact. Um, tends to be more thoughtful and optimistic. Right. Uh, and now we get into needs. So what is this individual's need once again with their circle in a completely different box? Their needs are tell me the rules. This is great. Think of your staff. Think of some staff and, and, and different tensions that you have on your staff. Tell me what the rules are. Don't what, leave. What is the process? Yeah, what is the process? What is the policy? Say? I want to know. I don't sense, Pastor, that that you're you're giving me a lot of input here. And, and I really want input on this. Uh, don't interrupt you unnecessarily. Uh, this person is democratic rather than assertive. Encourages trust and fairness invite your input, uh, invite your input. So this individual, if this person were on your staff and you notice in staff meeting, they're not saying much, it's because they're waiting for you to ask them for input Yeah. and they won't give it unless you ask for it. Okay, so I wanna see how they stress. What's their stress then? Gotcha, so then we turn, we go here to stress. Um, once again, down here in the yellow, stress behavior becomes over controlling. Uh, becomes resistive to change uh, and and conforming on the flip side. Passivity, is that what that saying? Yes, yeah, that's the passivity. Like, um, I'm not actually going to tell you, if I'm on your staff, I'm not going to tell you what the problem is. I'm just going to do what I want to do. All right. um, or I'm just going to do what you want, but inside I'm, I actually hate it and I'm just going to undermine you. <laughs> Um, quietly resistive and rigid. So here's here's some stress behavior when we get down in here. So uh, that's some good coaching there. Then we get into your interest. And so this breaks up. Uh, and this is great. So say you, you know, sometimes on a church staff, some people change seats. It's like, hey, I've been doing this, but man, it just doesn't fit in. And so this is a great tool here because it helps highlight what somebody's interest is. Um, and so this is a high social interest. Once again, the green going with those squares, right? Green, yellow, red, blue, to go with the, the doer, communicator, thinker, analyzer. So this again would help to know that people are in the right place doing the right thing or, yes. or not in the right place, not doing the right thing. Yeah. You know, I've noticed you're really struggling with such and such. You're you're not getting your paperwork in on time. You're not doing this, and you're 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 an administrative person on my staff. Well, you go down here, and, and maybe their uh, administrative score is like 20, and it's like, are you really enjoying this position we've got you in? Right. Um, so, how, what do we? You're need misplaced. To? You yeah. Care about, you care about the mission and the purpose, but yeah, but you're not. Yeah. You're, you're excited not. to get on board but we might've put you in a position you're not really excited about. This is really not your interest. Mm -hmm. gotcha. And so this is also, think of your internship, right? Um, working with interns, what a gift this would be to sit down with some young people and to be able to say, hey, this is what you're really, you're, you're 22 right now, 23. This is where your interests really lie. And so what does it mean for you and your career choices to kind of head this direction? So uh, great tool. I'll just, these are the components that I can do because of my specialization. Um, and so this is nine personality tools, nine ways we're all different. Uh, social energy, assertiveness, physical energy, uh, insistence, thought, self-consciousness, emotional energy, restlessness, incentives. And so basically uh, it gives scores and it's gonna show, it's gonna define each of them and then say, what your usual behavior is, right? And then it's going to say what your need is, the environment you really want to work in, because those are generally different. 
And that's a mistake we often make. We often think that if somebody's being a certain way with me, this is how they want to be treated in back. I'm just going to treat them the way they're treating me. Yeah. Um, and you were telling me about your own personal style. Would you, yes. Would you mind? Using yeah. So I'll give you, I'll give you the, the best example uh, for me. And it's the score of self-consciousness. And so with self-consciousness, um, uh, this is, you know, how much awareness do you have of yourself when you're entering into conflict or whatever it might be. And so for me, uh, this is not my score, but I had a very low usual behavior. And so what that means is when I talk to somebody, I'm very direct and straightforward and just kind of say what I'm, what I'm kind of thinking. Um, now, my need, on the other hand, was clear over on this opposite side. And so what that means is when you talk to me, my need is for you to be very sensitive. In lots of qualifiers. Lots of qualifiers. Yeah. Uh, enter into it gently. Do the sandwich, right? Something good. Hit me with the truth. Something good. Um, and so, so really point out your own inconsistency. In my the ways own. In which you yeah. So if you were in my church, you'd be like, gosh, Jim's kind of, he tells me exactly what he's thinking. I'm going to tell him exactly what I'm thinking. But then... I, you know, that triggers all my insecurity. Mm -hmm. And so this says that my, you know, it kind of lists what my stress behavior is. Now, the truth of the matter is uh, a majority of people are like that. Like the Berkman does studies. A majority of people want to talk to people rather frankly and directly. They generally want you to be more sensitive um, when talking to them. And if you don't, then they tend to respond in kind of agitated uh, they, they go into their stressor. And so what it taught me was, first of all, I need to be a little more sensitive when I'm talking to people. It, I, I need to pad things a little better and, and to still be, um, what's the right word? Uh, truthful. Uh, truthful. Yeah. Truth and love. Yeah. Right. Truth and love. Um, and, but on the flip side, I, maybe I need a little thicker skin here. Like maybe I'm taking things personally that aren't really personal. I realize that. I thought about some conversations that I had had and realized these people were trying to really communicate with me something different than what I heard. Because what I heard tapped into my own inadequacy and it really wasn't about my inadequacy. It was really about them saying something completely different. Yeah. And so be careful now when, when I listen to people to not instantly think they're coming at me um, because they're not. All right, Jim, anything else about the, before we open it up to questions, anything else about the content that you'd like to, uh, to share? And, and then uh, how does ask about yeah. how to take the test and the cost? So yeah, we'll let come me, to that. But first of all, the content itself. Let me, let me jump to the back with the, the content. Some of the, the great things I do want to say at the very end of the Berkman, it's going to list uh, your best ways for handling conflict. And it's going to talk about and this. This is Enneagram talk too. like basically in your behavior, there's you have two options. You've got this healthier, kind of more confident way to interact with people that's still very assertive, um, but yet kind of calm. And then you've got this less effective approach that is you when you're stressed and that still gets the point across, but not quite as effectively. And so it says when handling conflict, here's your effective approach to do it. Here's your less effective approach to do it. And it's going to give you those tips. Uh, and then it's going to list what are called relational disruptors. And so here's how other people may upset you without meaning to, like they didn't mean to. But And so kind of check yourself on these. Here down here, how others may unintentionally annoy you. And so some annoying characteristics that you can be aware of. Um, derailers uh, of, of effectiveness. And so if you're not careful, you can let these things derail your effectiveness as a leader. Um, your effective approach to managing your time. Be aware of these things when uh, managing your time and engaging with other people. And then some less effective ways uh, and how to increase your effectiveness. And so it's going to give you all of these tools. I, I didn't go over the grip, but here's, here's what the grip primarily looks like is spiritual gifts up here, your team style down here, what you need down here, your bodybuilding role in the body of Christ up here, who you need as a result down here, your greatest weakness. Do you think an individual would, let's just say, a team at um, 
Sugar Creek Bible Church. They're trying to put together a new youth volunteer team. They're committed and passionate about working together in some significant ways. Do you think they would start then with the grip? Um, and then maybe if one of the leader wanted to take the Berkman in addition to that for greater self-awareness yeah. and then come alongside with some coaching uh, to say, hey, Jim, help make sure I got a good grip. <laughs> got a good, a good grip, grip on, on the this. leadership grip and my Berkman assessment would be a good combo, you think? Totally. Yeah. If I were meeting with a ministry team, the, the grip is is very cheap. It's, you know, it's just, I think, $15 for that, that grip assessment. And then I can do one of two things. Like if you want to do individual coaching, which with each of those volunteer leaders, I can give them an hour or two of kind of time over the phone or on Zoom and help them understand uh, their gifts and, and how they can work and, and how they approach on team. But then I can also show up with that ministry team and then we can walk through some of this together and they can kind of see how they need one another. And also like, what are the gaps? And so like with some of these team styles, when you've got a gap, it could be the very reason there, there's been some ineffectiveness on that team. Uh, gotcha. And so then you can, I, I, as the captain of the whole thing, can kind of step back and go, okay, team, like, what do you notice here? And then you say, well, there's nobody here that has the let's be careful approach to teamwork. And so, okay, well, what's the results of that? Do you think, well, we've tried four different events and none of them have, gone over that well because we always forgot things oh so maybe we need to be looking for a let's be careful kind of person to be on the team or or the team you know if you got a bunch of people like me that like to think a lot and not actually lead to action yeah hey i notice you don't have anybody on your team that's a let's go there's there's nobody on this team that's that's action oriented so what is that meant for you all as a team well we haven't done much <laughs> okay well okay. So I, it's making sense to me now that the sort of um, you can't just go get this online and have a free download. And right. again, not that any assessment wants people to figure out their own Myers-Briggs or whatever Enneagram number. But, um, but in this case in particular, they are proprietary about it because yeah. of what you said is that the assessment comes alongside with the, some coaching and some assumed teachability and some growth expected as a result of the deficiencies, both individually as well for the team. Did I get it? Is that right? The Grip Berkman community really wants better for the body of Christ. Yeah. They really want the body to be healthier and to be better. And they're not so much like, hey, buy our assessment and it'll help you. They're more like, let's all team up together yeah. and do some things that lead to some real change. And if it doesn't lead to real change, we don't, we don't want to do it. Okay. Like, we don't want you to have an assessment for assessment's sake. Gotcha. So the cost of the GRIP assessment is? Yeah, the GRIP is 15. Uh, you can get the GRIP and the basic Berkman for? 59. You said, and then there's a signature Berkman combined with the GRIP, and that costs? 129. Okay. And then uh, someone could contact you at the information above your head if they want to talk about personal coaching. And then just to take the test itself again, that comes through you, I assume. They don't go to a website or anything Correct. like that. Correct. Yeah. I've, so just contact you and yeah, I've got let to set me that take up. this. Yeah, I can take this test, et cetera. Okay. And then you can discuss the coaching because you do have uh, a separate organization to do personal coaching. But as always, um, you guys know that we never want finances to get in the way of ministry, our ministry leaders and our associates as I like to call them, getting what they need. And so please don't hesitate to say, hey, you know, can we, can I get a scholarship? Um, can I, uh, yeah, can you help our team out? And we'll, we'll talk together. So get in touch with me or tell Jim to coordinate with me so that you guys can, if you're interested in it, uh, get a hold of it. All right, uh, you can unmute yourself or you can hit the space bar if you're at a PC, if you have uh, questions that you'd like to ask. Um, things that you want to talk to Jim about, or you can put them in the uh, chat section like Deanna's doing here as well. So read that for me, Jim. My eyes are quite what they used to be. Whoops, hang on. And then let's make sure, yeah. Was the result of this test for you more like, oh, now I understand my thought behavior, or oh, now I see how I need to change my thought behavior to improve communication and productivity? 
Uh, I mean, both. Um, the I, I didn't list, but there there were several things that for me explain some things in my ministry, some uh, some struggles within my ministry. For for one, I have a a rare kind of thing. Uh, those four boxes generally people's personality uh, markers tend to be in different boxes. Uh, roughly twenty percent of people will have all three of their components in one box. And I'm one of those, those 20 or 25% where it's all in the thinking box. And so as a leader, I tend to think things to death and it tends to annoy people around me that are action oriented. Um, they wonder why it takes me so long to actually. And, and so I always thought, well, people just don't get that there's a process to things. And I, I understand the process of things. What that helped me realize was, no, I got all my eggs in one basket and I will actually sit and think on something far longer than what is needed to. And so I need to trust people on my team that are action oriented, that when they kind of are like, hey, Jim, we should have launched on this like a month ago, that that's my cue. Like we need to get going now. And I actually, as a result of that, even in some of my different teams, and I've got a personal coach that I work with too. I've, I've shared this and she, she's coaching me now for faster action in different scenarios. Um, and even on different teams that I'm on. And I've, I've walked with you. We've walked together for a few years now and you've been fairly open about yep. your emotional state and struggles yeah. with depression and things like that you you've had a podcast about right I put uh, emotional there. health and um and this the, the the enneagram and the script berkman are actually informing your future your convergence like yeah how you want to be in the local church how you want to serve the local church uh, how you might be of the best um minister in your future. So it's had a, it's having its personal impact as well. Yeah. I would say that it, it has helped me better define my sweet spot that I've recognized that because of the way that my Berkman's patterned, um, that there are certain roles, um, even within pastoral ministry that I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to work more optimally in. Uh, but at the same time, based upon the role that I'm in now, uh, where I need to kind of check myself and, and not gravitate too much. Yeah. in that direction all right so this question is about uh again back to the enneagram it's uh, sounds like it's team focused versus personal focused sounds right are there aspects or results that you would say tie into or connect with your enneagram number for instance i'm sure there's a lot of overlap yeah. isn't there there's tons of overlap and it's it's actually even when i know like some people in my church i've had take both of these and the the enneagram results are all over the the berkman stuff and 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 mine is too it's it's all over it um and the if i'm able to use both tools with somebody it's really remarkable because the enneagram tool that i use actually assesses stress and so it can actually show me uh in what way somebody is stressed because stress equals behavior and it measures kind of your low end behavior versus your high and healthier behavior the grip Bergman does not measure stress. Uh, it just tells me what your stress behavior will be. And so I, it's, it's kind of cool to have both tools because the Enneagram can kind of let me know, Hey, you're stressed right now. Uh, and the grip Bergman tells me, well, here's some behavior that you might be familiar with right now. And I'll, I'll state the obvious. And that is that in some of our ministries and in, some of our um, churches, when we introduce the Enneagram, there's, it still has a lot of baggage. And we've, we've yeah. discussed that here, as you know, with uh, Jeremy Lenham and et cetera, and trying to navigate that. But it does still carry some, a lot of question marks around it where yeah. in, this tool doesn't, doesn't have no, the not, same No, not nearly as much. And even theological and- Even and, different community. When I think of Enneagram, it's, it's not hard to get, um, way off Christian base as far as, as people that utilize it, uh, Eastern, you know, stuff like that. The grip Berkman is strongly in, in kind of almost, almost the evangelical Christian community are, are the people that, that associate with it. Um, 
and the Enneagram yeah. is used by, by Christian circles and has some solid stuff there, but also can get outside. And of again, I, you'll forgive me for being this simplistic with it, but we're all trying to grap grapple around it. What I like about what you're describing about Grip Berkman is it is a, uh, it's a orthodox Christian theologically focused Myers-Briggs with some additional yeah. um, purpose, mission fulfillment, team dynamics added to it. And I like that. I mean, I, it reminds me of Myers-Briggs and that's sort of a, uh, you know, a tool that is, seems years ago. And this seems a little more intentional and focused. And I think, again, as I've said already, that our revisiting of these both personally as well as as a team are really helpful from time to time because we don't know each other's stories and, and this all can help us to turbo yep. good, healthy synergy relations, relationships and also um, to, to then evoke why we're that way, to tell our, our stories yeah. beyond what the assessments are. All right, other questions that you guys have? You can either just uh, jump on or comments. Yeah, more, um, any other ahas that you can share with us? You mentioned figured out, uh, hey, uh, I'm direct, but I want other people to not be direct with me. And uh, you mentioned another one too. Any other ahas that this did for you? So um, the, the funny thing, I'm, like I said, I'm meeting with my admin today. And, and so I'm kind of one of 20% has all their markers in one box. My admin also has all of his markers in the same box. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and, and that kind of defines our relationship probably. <laughs> you know, we have had kind of this, this love hate tension about things. Well, it's because we're a lot like each other. Didn't realize how a lot like we were. Um, and so for me, it's like, oh man, if there's any tension that I've felt with him, it's because that's, that's kind of me too. Like he's, he's more like me than, than what I realized. Um, and so that's been an aha, uh, for me and my staff. The other aha is the importance of communicating needs. Um, and so this is going to make you aware of that. It's like, Hey, do you recognize that you kind of need this type of environment? Yeah. Yeah, I do. That really resonates with me. Well, is, would you say that's your type of environment? No, no, it's not. Well, is there maybe something you can do about that is, uh, and that's one of, they even have like this sheet that's like. In other words, ask for what you wish and want. If you need a computer, it may just go to lighting. It may go yeah. to whatever. But, Something else. But you indicate that, yeah, your, your scores indicate that you have these certain needs, but you don't bring those up. No. And that's you haven't becoming a problem. And, and that's generally like how we, we have a usual way of being that is really about meeting our needs. And when it doesn't meet our needs, we don't, we sometimes don't know what to do. We, Perfect. so we get stressed as opposed to saying to somebody, man, can we work this out? Because this would really help. Yeah. Can we not vote on this tonight? Because right. I need another week yes. and some time away to think. About yes. It. Yeah. Gotcha. And there's patterns of that. So we can pick up on patterns in your ministry and your life of just getting to this point and not vocalizing mm -hmm what what the need is and so that was the other aha moment for me that was like i'm still wrapping my head around ways that i haven't communicated that to people so is that a better way all right i'm trying to because i've heard in your comments it sounds like okay I, I realize this is a weakness of mine and now i'm trying to get better at it yeah but when i think of spiritual giftedness or your sweet spot that idea is don't try to get too much better at your weaknesses. You just worry about your sweet spot. Are you trying to, are you, are you the duck that's trying to learn to climb the tree? Right. Or it, it, has, it, has it caused you to do this? Or are you the duck that's trying to get a squirrel on your team? What? How are you approaching I think it's this? a both I've, and. Yeah, I've heard a little bit of both. It's so, a both okay. and. Okay. Um, because, um, you you have these different roles to fulfill these these different places where you're at now and but it somewhat gives you some better insight into yourself into the direction that you can go uh and develop in that certain way but the the bottom line is like there still needs to be communication to your team 
about what's going on. It's better just, equips you to do that. Or just embrace your limits. Just or embrace say, your we limits. Can't, we can't get that done or no. We, we, we got this issue and let's be gentle with each other. And sometimes those are the hard conversations with our staff that we don't want to have is when I look at this, this really shows that you're not, you're not a, you don't seem to be a good fit for that are interested in this. Is that what you would say? Yes. Then why did you say yes? Well, because you asked me to. Well, the nominating committee. And then, and then maybe we have an exit conversation. Right. Right. And so, uh, and we can do that in perhaps a gentle way. Yeah. Like, you know, it looks mm -hmm. like maybe you'd be happier in a, in a different fit. Like I'm not firing you right now. That's not what I'm saying, but mm -hmm. perhaps it's, what would it and look like? I mean, both, both in terms of paid as well as volunteer. I mean, this kind of work with volunteers is so critical. Oh how, my do you, gosh. how do you fire a volunteer, right? Yeah. Back at the kids' own session. All right, Dedra, I'm going to ask you if you would to uh, unmute and just ask your question and put some put some skin on your pitfalls question. Uh, yeah, I think that I actually just put that in there as my own kind of reminder to myself as to what it was I was going to say, but I'm trying to frame it. And the more I try to frame the question, the more I feel like there's more questions. So I think maybe more of what I would maybe say is, is it important that we want to highlight that this is vocationally emphasized with regard to how to use this tool? Um, because um, there might be other implications that might be there with regard to taking an assessment like this, that people may think, oh, this is a personality assessment. Now I know some things about me in general life, where that's, I think, part of it, but it sounds very much like it's career oriented, it's vocationally oriented, um, or am I misunderstanding that? So I think the purpose of the career and the vocation is to measure interest, mm -hmm. right? And so what, what do you seem to be most interested in? And even some of the questions are kind of weird like that, because, you know, at my point in life, I'm not going to go back and, and be a biologist, like I'm not going to go but I've, I've got some biology interests. I love the outdoors. And so it's, it's really a, a way of measuring um, interest. And so for, for the grip, not at all. The vocational aspect does not show up in the grip, spiritual gifts portion at all. In the basic Berkman, uh, the component is in there and it might be helpful for someone to see that, but don't think that that is a primary thrust for this because it is not. Like you would, you would expect this to do leadership development work. You're not going to be disappointed by that. You're not going to get done with this and think, well, this really told me career stuff. I didn't take this for career stuff. I took it for leadership development. It's going to point out leadership development, but as a side benefit. It's really about team, team effectiveness. Is yeah. What I hear you saying. Yes. So it has aspects of that, but it, it but it's not primarily a personality inventory no. either in that uh -uh. same sense. So yeah. some, some combo for the sake of team synergy. Deidre, I thought that was kind of weird about it too. Deidre. When I, Deidre, when I first saw it was that uh, the career aspect of it, I'm like, what is this? Like, uh, and it's really just a sidebar. It's just, it's, it's helpful to look at and go, Oh, but it's, it's not the thrust of it at all. Does that help, Pedro? Yes, thank you. Yeah. All right, anybody else? How much time we got? About three minutes. I'll save it. Well, all right, I'll start it and you cut it off when it's out of time. Okay, so you mentioned the interns, right? Yeah. So uh, the team of interns. So they're with us for two months. And I found like with a lot of spiritual gifts inventory or other things like that, that the more you've done ministry, the more you're able to answer these questions. Uh, so would it be better to, what would be, if we're only going to do it once with our staff, would it be better to do it at the beginning of the summer so that we're able to better understand and work with each other throughout the summer? Or would it be a better gift at the end of the summer after they've experienced multiple ways of doing ministry? that they answer it then and we say here we're gonna send you off you know i i would with interns i would just do the basic berkman because it comes with the occupation stuff as well and it's and it's much cheaper um 
and I, I don't think all the nine components is that essential for that kind of team. But the basic Berkman helps those students get a basic understanding of, of how they're going to be framing their experience together, who's going to be really good at getting stuff done, who on your team is going to be good at communicating, like we've got summer camp, and who's going to get up in front and lead all this stuff? Well, you want the green communicator up there doing all that. And so I would do it at, at the beginning um, and let them talk about that and then maybe wrap it up at the end by having another conversation around. And, and so this is another great opportunity. And if I could just interject, and what you're describing is the basic Berkman assumes the spiritual gifts grip. Yes. So we say it's affordable in it. at that $59 rate. Yes, it, it includes the grip. Go ahead. But then it also allows them to speak about those peers that are with them and to say, you know, uh, this was their quality and it really came out when we needed it to. And, and so you can actually encourage your team to speak well of others in the circle based upon their, their grip and their Berkman. I do it at the beginning. All right. I do find myself wondering many times how often had we paused in the midst of a team struggle and said, let's just go back and visit again how we're wired. And I have a specific uh, situation in mind that I think, had we stop and say now, who, who are you and who, who am I? And you remember what I said about me? Yeah. It makes sense that in light of this, this crisis that has happened to us, in light of this uh, tsunami that is surrounding us uh, is that we ought to get back and remind ourselves, yes, of course, that's, that's how you would respond. And again, it's not an excuse because we are called to be in Christ and to uh, yield to his sur surrendering spirit, but we are also embodied with certain uh, personality and and there wouldn't be the reaction that I would have to them or they would have to me in the process of that. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense inside crisis and it makes side sense outside of crisis to continue to pause yeah. and have a regular revisit of these. And an assessment tool helps because let's say you're on my staff and I sit down with you and I just try to approach what the issue is that I'm recognizing. It's very easy to kind of take offense to that and go, well, that's your opinion. Yeah. But when you sit down with an assessment tool, Let's turn to page 32 here. Um, okay, let's let's talk about, you know, this says that that sometimes you don't like it when people place confinements on you or something. Is that is that kind of how you felt, uh, you know, last month when we had this problem? Um, yeah, it's very much how I felt. Okay, well, how could we... Re I guess I could have taken a breath and, and, you know, we could have talked through it a little bit more and I could have not reacted like I did. Well... Um Jim, I think you're a really good gift to us. So thank you for hey, thank you. Uh, the ways in which you have uh, been available to help us with this. And I'm interested in my own assessment. So I'll mm. talk to you that offline. I assume everybody can read what's, what's over Jim's shoulder in terms of his contact info. If not, let me know and I will uh, get back with you about it. And obviously um, there's a cost to the assessment and there was a cost uh, to Jim's doing the work itself. And it gives me the opportunity to say that TEI got to come alongside and help with a portion of the training that he received uh, for your sake and for your good. And so if any of you also want to take advantage of what he has, then let us know how we can help. And at the same time, if there's a training that you want to do, please don't ever let finances keep you from pursuing how to make uh, Central Missouri, a uh, healthier, robust place. We want to be about that. And of course, all that comes with the financial gifts of folks who are able to help us. And uh, so continue to pray that the Lord will give us uh, favor in, in, in the gifts of folks. So thank you always to our supporters that make this available at no cost. Um, there's a cost, but it's free for all of our ministry leaders, what I'm trying to say. Okay, I'll see you guys uh, soon or next month in May. So blessings, everybody. Keep the faith.